this. Three fried beans. Yeah. This is three weeks old. Oh my god. Touch it. Slimy, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, sir. Let's get rid of that. This is your freaking life. You're in debt a half a million dollars. Look at this. These are your French fries. They should be frozen, right? Are they? No. Nope. Oh my god. They're made to be cooked frozen. When was this replaced? And the chef, this should be replaced every couple of days, the container, correct? Yep. Be stored in a proper container? Always flipped. Like when, how old do you think this is? Don? I have no idea. Would you eat that? You gonna serve that to someone? You don't have a freaking clue. This bar was opened about 60 years ago, 1957, by the current owner, Brad's father, Jex. Wow. Brad's dad, Jex, dies a year ago. Now Brad is losing $4,000 a month. He's cashed in two 401ks. He's in debt $300,000. Brad's squandering the family legacy. So there's Brad. We'll take a beer and a shot. I'm guessing that's one of many beers for the night. You guys need help with anything? You good? So that's Brad's daughters, Courtney and Paige. It's awful in here. I'm dirty. Courtney used to be the general manager of this bar. She was doing pretty well when she ran it a few years ago, but Brad wouldn't let her do anything. So she got so stifled, she quit. He's going down the tubes, and the bar that his father built is probably going to be closed in the next month or two if we can't rescue this. I'll have one more of these. There's Elisa. She's a bartender. How's it going, guys? Good, thank you. So that's the Berg system that they're using to pour their cocktails. Oh, I gotcha. In the state of Utah, you not only have to track your sales, you have to track your ounces. The Berg system makes all of that compliant because it tracks every ounce and it makes sure that every ounce that's poured is in the POS system. And you can't be off. You can lose your liquor license. Wow. They do not take these things lightly. Hey, guys, welcome to the fifth. What can I get you for you to drink? There's Teresa. She's a new bartender, just started. All right, OK, you guys on cash? There's Tony. He's a veteran bartender. He's been there for a while. Everything good. And then there's Devin, the manager. How's it going, John? Good. How you doing, bud? There's John. He's your cook, chef. What's this? He's got what the hell is that? I think he has everything in that cart, and he's just pulling it off. Back in the cart? Yeah. So he's holding protein at a dangerous temperature. You're going to get somebody sick. Exactly. So this doesn't make any sense at all. What the hell kind of system is this? It's a steam and table sitting right there, I think. Steam table, yeah. So if he put his meats in a steam table, which is sitting right there, chef, yeah. he could scoop and serve. Yeah. It'd be faster. He'd right save a there. step. Yeah, you're right. So Brad has owned this place, and he wants to be successful. Why isn't John trained? I'm going to have one more of them, and then she got some, oh, she got some beer on ice over there. So guys, for recon tonight, I got players from the Utah Royals, which is the state soccer yeah. team. Yeah. What I wanted to do tonight is I'm going to have a couple of the girls come in. I'm going to wait a few minutes, have a couple more girls come in. I want to see if Brad notices this influx of business. So here are our first two girls. What can I get for you guys? Do you guys have any, like, house specials? Like um, We have a, a watermelon-based house try. drink. I'll try that, yeah. You can tell by the glass that drink sucks. This is a pint glass. It's made for beer, not a cocktail. It's just not going to work. Can I get a gimlet, please? Oh, God. Um, I don't know what a gimlet is. Oh. It's a classic. It's a gin drink, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I've worked here 16 years and never had anyone order one. Never had someone order a gimlet? I have never made one in my entire life. Okay. Do you want to help me out? Should um, I look it up? Oh, God. Can I just do uh, whiskey sour? How do you know what that is? Uh, I don't know. You can't make a whiskey sour that fast. Use the color of that. That's not a whiskey sour. <laughs> Our drinks definitely look like <laughs> You can have my cherry. Oh, you did get a cherry. And a whiskey sour? Yeah, she was like, let's just put this drink oh, in a small <laughs> They're laughing at this place. Yeah. Pissing me off. Oh. Ridiculous. Is she like leaving? Leaving? She just walked out. Like I think she's like done. Whoa. Brad just had an employee walk out, and he didn't even notice. What's up, Jack? 
Matt. Okay, let's send in two more girls. Hello, I'm glad you made yeah. it. Brad still has no idea that these girls are even in this bar. Well, I'm getting already liquored up. Okay, so guys, we got four girls. So I also have 15 people waiting in the street. Okay. Just regular customers, so I'm sending them in now. Brad now has a fully packed bar and an employee walked out. What does it take for him to even notice this? I'm gonna pull out one bartender. Okay, let's see what happens. Take Teresa, the bartender, outside. I wonder how long it takes Brad to notice this. How long would it take you to notice it? I'd already be up and be like, hey, Teresa, where are you going? Maybe he can help you. Just kind of disappeared. So I got the soccer team and 15 customers, and I'm pulling bartenders, and let's see what Brad does. Nope. We could do a shot. Pull another bartender. Pull one more bartender. <laughs> oh, he's getting up. Where's he going? Let's follow Brad. He's just letting her out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm still looking for our server. <laughs> I've pulled every bartender except for Devin. Is and he's the, the last one. You ready? Yeah. Pull the last one. Is uh, it corn? Corn. Here you go. All right, well. <laughs> every employee is gone. Oh, my gosh. Any owner who doesn't notice that their <laughs> bar is packed and there's no employees either doesn't care or is an idiot. Where'd all the bartenders go? Guess I can help out. Well, I actually oh. His daughter just jumped behind the bar. Yes. Oh, can I get some change? Yes. So now I'm going to pull them, too. Take the daughters out as well. There is not one employee in that building. Are you freaking serious? I mean, this is kind of hard to watch. Not for Brad. <laughs> I pulled every employee out of this bar. I put about 22 customers in the bar. They're not being served. And Brad is sitting on his butt in a booth, oblivious to all of this. You know what? I'm going to go sit with him. Oh, uh, It's about to get real. Yeah. Hello, Brad. Why should you stand up now? You've been sitting on your ass all night. <clears throat> you understand there's not one employee in the building right now? All of them are gone at once. Oh, I imagine I thought they were going to come back in. So if they never come back, you're just going to sit here all night? You have people there that are not being served. I can't serve them because I've been drinking. If you were drinking, could you serve them? Yes. You know how to make the drinks? Do you know how to use the cash register? No. You've owned this bar for 20 years, and you don't know how to use the cash register? No. What would your father be doing differently than you right now? Because it was successful for him for almost 40 years, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Did he train his employees? Yeah. Did he make sure that recipes were followed and the food was good and the drinks were good? Yeah. Brad! Was he sitting on his ass when he was doing those things? No. Why did you not protect your father's legacy? Yes. This doesn't mean anything to you right now, does it? Yes, it does. I feel like that glass means more to you than this frickin' bar. No, that's not true. Well, then why don't you get off your ass? I thought we had it covered. I mean, look around. It's obviously covered. Are you that stupid? No. I want you to go get a pad and a piece of paper. I want you to write down everything that your father did every day in this bar. And I will come back here tomorrow morning and talk with you when you're sober and see if I even want to help you, to be honest with you. Because the guy I'm sitting with right now, I ain't going to do for. If you don't get off your ass, I ain't going to get off mine. I will. Stand up, clean this table, get behind the bar, do something <clears throat> yeah well obviously i was just sitting there but have uh 
somebody come in and call me a piece of shit. No, I don't like that. Well, I am a great bar owner. Look at him smiling. He thinks this is fun. No, I don't. If you think this is fun, wait till you see me tomorrow. Boom. Red is completely disengaged. All he wants to do is sit on his ass and do nothing but fail. And if he doesn't change his attitude and show me that he cares, I can't do anything here. There it is. Pepe's. Look at the sign, lounge bar. But a lounge is a bar. You lounge on the bar. You see Pepe's over there, so you know it's branded over there, but you're not even sure what the hell this is. I'm confused. It's got to be branded. It has to be far more inviting. Look at this bar. The Christmas lights hanging, guys. I can see why employees call it the dungeon, how bland and just below this community. Go to the kitchen, chef. Yeah. Good sized kitchen. Yeah, set up well. The equipment looks well maintained. I don't understand why all this meat is there. I've never seen a restaurant that cooks before they get the orders. So they're going to cook it ahead, then they're going to hold it? How's that going to be in quality, chef? Just cook it to order. So I'm seeing a lot of waste here. Yeah. Is everything OK down there? A lot of people came in. There's Victor and Juan. Well, you notice, guys, we're not looking at a bar. We're looking at an office. So the two of them buy this bar. So they own the land. They own the building. Two and a half million dollar investment. And they're losing $6,000 a month. So they buy this place. They never come here. And when they are here, Victor watches his own bar from a monitor in his upstairs office. Either they're so independently wealthy that they don't give a shit about the $6,000 a month, or something is just completely illogical about the situation. Oblivious. There's them. There's the bar. Can I get a spicy margarita? Buffalo wings. That's Devin. She's the manager. Have that crayon over here. So that's Victor. Victor's a server. So these are our two bartenders. Got two shots. That's Shonda. So that's Jessica. Alex, look at the foam. So much waste. Oh, oh geez. 20, 30% of that beer went down a drain. They're probably losing two to three pitchers just on the first pour alone. It's gonna take five beers to fill it up. So they can't make money. How long would it take you to see that? Immediately, if you're looking. How long would it take you to see that? I mean, seconds. You'd notice it from across the room if you were in the room. Look at them. They have no idea. This makes no sense to me, Jason. Water disconnect. Let's see how their ordering system is. OK, so she's trying to figure out where to go. Hi. Shonda, for Fabian. Fabian, so they, they take customers' names. OK, the quesadilla? Oh, no. Fries? Out of fries? Will that work? So this what isn't Fabian's at all. So where does the quesadilla go? Well, our mess up, but I'll get the nachos. Do you want them? So she just gave it away because okay, they messed up. This is classic rookie restaurant. Somebody ordered a quesadilla who's now not going to get it. Now somebody else is going to say, where's my quesadilla? I give them a quesadilla. Now the next guy doesn't have his. Blow it off now, but it'll be back in three minutes. Oh, yeah, kick the can down the road. It sets off a chain reaction. It just screws every guest at that bar. I don't know what they're cooking this for. And then how long on those wings, the buffalo? How's that going to be in quality, chef? It, it just diminishes. I mean, you know, why Why do it? You have this great kitchen. I mean, this is meant for your kitchen at home, not in a commercial setting. It's a hot plate, OK? Come in here. OK. Thank you, thank you. Food does not look that awful. It does look microwave, though. That's that after school special. Yeah. Kind of chewy. Here's some, of, here's some of the brown. Stop blowing. <laughs> So people aren't getting served. People are getting served food they didn't order, which means the customers who did order it are not going to get it. Devin, the manager, has no idea where she's bringing anything. The beer is going down the drain. The beef is going to wind up in a garbage pail. And in spite of all of this going on, look at them. But how are they doing down there? Fine. They got their computer going. They got their little boxes going. Once they look at it on that computer, it's too late. They can't fix it anymore. But they can fix it downstairs. They're losing money literally right below their nose. And there's one thing about golf communities. The average golfer makes $100,000 a year. Good income level. Very good. The other interesting thing about golfers is over 70% of them eat out once a week. Oh, you know, like the perfect yeah, audience great, when you right? think about that it. That makes sense. Bread and butter. So, I got about 30 of them on their carts. And I want to show these people the potential that they could have 
if they seized it. I'm going to drive in with these guys, and let's see what happens when the golfers hit the fan. I'd like to see a hole in one. John Telfer. And did he come in? Whose beer is that? It's mine. I had him taste it. Is it right? Is it cold? Because it looks a little flat. Doesn't look right, is it? They, they ordered margarita. You ordered a margarita. And I sent it back. And you sent it back. So now you got a beer. Drink it. Who's a beer drinker here? Come here, the beer guy. Try this. Is that, a, is that right for you? Yeah. A little flat. You notice when she pours a beer, 30% of it goes down the drain. Because it isn't right. So where's the owner? Where are the owners, he said. Have you guys seen the owner? Have you guys seen the owner? How about the bartender? Has she seen the owner? He's going to come barging in here. Where the hell is the owner? Oh, I brought about 35 golfers in here. They live across the street. They should love that they're here. They should treat them that way. Let's see how they react to this. Now this gets real. How is this? Vitamin and it fell out the bottom. I think it's frozen. I'm like 90% sure. What if I told you that was cooked in a microwave? Would you believe it based on the way it felt in your mouth? Yes. May I? Go for it. Anybody want to eat this? Somebody should apologize. Where's the owner? Good question. Have any of you seen the owner anywhere? No. He's going to come by in here. Come here. Back to the door. You're just gonna make it pissed off more. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm okay. Have you seen what's going on downstairs? I have. So did you notice them dumping beer down the drain? I did. Did you notice the food going to the wrong tables? Well, no. You're losing about $6,000 a month, right? Correct. Correct. Do you like giving away $75,000, $80,000 a year? I don't. We always intended for it to run well. We got in over our heads or something. So you're failing? Yes. Totally. So when you're failing. failing at something, do you pull away from it, or do you go into it? And you should go into it. it. But you're not. I can't turn this around, Victor, for you to sit up here as it's failing down there. Come downstairs with me. Let's look I, at this I together. don't want to walk down there. Why? This, I mean, why do people make fun? I mean, ridiculous. Well, if you don't want to walk down there, then I'm not going to walk down there either. I'll leave. It happens my way, not yours. Are you ridiculizing in front of everybody? I might. Maybe you deserve it. We've already come this far. Let's just do it. You don't come downstairs, I just leave. It's up to you. Such a big decision. You want to lose your business or not? I'll come with you. OK, let's do it. Excuse me, guys. If you guys could make room so we can get behind the bar, that would be perfect. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Here's the owner I was looking for. Did they come through for you tonight? You need to hear this, Victor. If Victor and Laura took control and made this place good, would you come back? So it's up to you, Victor. This is your employees. They're counting on you to help them make a living. You're not. Doesn't that mean something to you? Don't you want to come through for them? Of course I do. Well, then do it. 
You help me, I will. If I help you, I want you to be here every day with me. Starting tomorrow, I'm gonna work your ass off. Welcome to the restaurant business. Welcome to the restaurant business. Go bust the table. Bust their table. Clean this table. Go clean their table. Go to work, for Christ's sakes. Kennedy Space Center tip is literally five miles down the road. Wow. Kennedy Space Center is an economic engine that drives this entire community. Think of all the NASA employees that have drank in this bar. Wow. And they all drive up and down this road. So this bar was opened in the 60s. 20 years ago, it was bought by a gentleman named Lee. There's Lee. Wow. Lee passed away three years ago and left the bar to his daughter, Serena. There she is. There's Serena. As long as it's cold and good and it goes down, it's all that matters, Bubba. This bar connects her to her father. Mm -hmm. So she is fighting for this more for her family legacy and her father's legacy than the business itself. She has to find a way to connect to the business, yep. not just the legacy. And that's what I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. She's been running this bar for three years. She's in debt, $600,000. Oh she's months from closing. She just told me she's not drinking. There's Amanda. Amanda is Serena's daughter. You know what? Don't make me cut you off. I know you too well. There's Amy. She's a manager and bartender. There's Kenny. Do you guys know who has two thumbs and loves bow jobs? He's a bar back by the name of Bobo. This is his nickname. <laughs> yeah, this guy. <laughs> he's a character, and he's there all the time. Jim, you want a bottle or a draft? So that's Terry. Terry was Lee's girlfriend for many years. Got some on me, Jim. <laughs> and I think this bar connects them all back to Lee. This is Brian. He's your kitchen manager, Tiff. And there's our cook, whose name is Q. Look at this bar. It's so dated. Everything is dingy. And depressing, to be honest. Between the colors and the light and the energy in this place, it needs a full-on overhaul. Is that carpet on the walls? Oh, my god! Excuse me? That is maroon carpet. Oh, wow. On the wall. Oh. That's interesting. Well, it does dampen sound, but it also absorbs odors and yeah. dust yeah. and dirt. I wonder how many times that's been cleaned. Where's that chicken going? So I'm guessing they're going to finish these off in the fryer. Yep. Is he about the plastic wrap? Yes, he yes, is. Yes, he is. <gasps> it should not be wrapped hot going into a refrigerator. You're trapping in the heat and bring down the whole refrigeration. And then what happens with the guests? You know, headaches, stomach aches, <laughs> bathroom. I mean, there's so many issues that people don't know. Like people like this, not putting it into temperature. Well, Amanda seems to know the POS. Good grief. There's a lot of steps. That was like oh 16 buttons for one basket of chicken. Can you imagine how much this slows them down? Watch, okay, three, four, five, six, 13. 14. She's still going. 17. 18. Oh, my 19, God. 19, 20. Oh. 21, 2, 3, 4. Sale complete. 24 entries to get that ordered. Oh, my gosh. That's nuts. So imagine working behind that bar, oh. and the person in front of you has two drinks, 48 freaking buttons mm. before you get to that terminal. Mm. That That is a point of frustration right there. We got to change this POS system, because that was shocking. That's not medium. That is well done. Let me take it back. I'll be right back. Can I get a medium burger ASAP, please? This place is just a mess, guys. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Serena cares at all. Or does Amanda care about the bar or her mother? So you know me, guys. I've had this bar under surveillance for the past three days. I want you to watch how Serena and Amanda get along. Watch this. I throw whatever she says out of my ear because I'm just, I'm over it. Ask any mother person in here what I can do every day. Live the dream, bitch, live it. You know, grow up. She's yeah. so negative. Because I had to be at your sorry bar. It's like, no, you stupid bitch. So you know what? Tell somebody else who you know, believe you're Then you wonder why I'm not up here tonight because I can't stand to be around her. So. Amanda obviously resents that she has to be there in the first place. Mm -hmm. Serena obviously can't do this without her. Now, look at them. They don't even look in each other's eyes. You can cut the tension with a knife. We're never going to fix this bar if I don't break that tension. I'm going to go do that. OK, OK. Hopefully, I can get them to at least look at each other. There's one blatant problem in this bar, and that's the relationship of Serena and Amanda. There is a tension between the two of them that I can feel. 
You'll get your seat back, don't worry. Hello. Hello. Good, how are you? When John first came in, I was shocked that he was here tonight. Hello. Hi. Why don't you come talk to me with your mom? Can you get her and come on yes, over? Yes, I will. John walked in and I almost wanted to vomit. I was very nervous. Here, man, just sit here. You've said things about her that I could not imagine saying about a child. There are times where I, you know, when I come up here, she yells at me and says, go home. Do because this, and she'll say. Because it's why I'm working, right. and I don't want that. I'll train, say something, and she doesn't want me to call her out in front of her. There's people. some times where you just get a little buzz on, and you throw something that's not even irrelevant of what we're even dealing with or whatever. And yeah, it's hurtful. It's bashing. And yes, it pisses me off. And it makes me want to tell you, it's, go home, It's which not I even do. like that, because it's not there even like that when times, I tell you I'm to not go even, home like that. Not even like trying to you know, call you, you may out be, or be a yes, butt you are to you. because no, you not. can talk about one it's, time. It's, it's the, and when you talk, it's if it happened one time, you make it sound like it happens every single day. Is this it, the way it, it is? Does she be... just talk and she never lets you speak? Is that the way it is? That's how we both do each other. Sometimes she says things, and then I try to be meaner than what she said. And we can we say the meanest things that you can imagine to each so other. If you guys don't respect each other, why should I respect you? You're, you're exactly right. So you are more interested in upping each other's insults than helping this barn. Is this what we would have wanted? No. You disrespect your own family legacy. You disrespect each other. You disrespect the business. And then you wonder why you're losing money. So why Correct. are you here, Amanda? Help her to do whatever I can. This is my mom. This is my family. This is something that's going to be mine and my kids. And there's things you could have done to make a big difference, right? For two years, the whole time I was here, it was, we're shutting you down if you don't give us, you know, $86,000. We're going to shut you down if you do not pay this $46,000. No, we're not going to take any little payments. You guys are too late, and you do this all the time. What Penny, would your father say if you were sitting here telling him all these excuses? My dad would be proud that I didn't come in here knowing what the hell I was doing, and the doors are still open. So what happens if this closes? I don't know what she did. You lose it, you know, please. Look at this place. Here's the front entrance. There's a bunch of seating in here. Thunderbolt Bar and Grill is broken up into two sections. The main dining area and a pool and game room. At 3,800 square feet, the bar seats 12 and the main dining room has nearly 10 tables. Look at the metal on the walls. Those walls must have been covered with some awful finish, and they just threw the, cal exactly. the galvanized metal up there to cover it up. Little 80s. So this place, Thunderbolt, is owned by Don. Ooh, right behind you, right behind you. That was a little awkward. His father drank here from when he was a little kid. So imagine. If you owned the bar that your father went to. How proud you would be. So you'd work it, you'd nurture it. You'd almost be carrying your father's legacy yes. with it. Yeah. Is any good? I hadn't tasted it yet. Ooh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> Not Don. No. I'm going to come back. Good on water? This is Ray. She's the cook and the niece of Don. Oh. And every two weeks, she quits again. Oh. Right. I'm everywhere. <laughs> Keeping him in line? I try. That's Amber, the bartender. Walks up the stairs like this. Hey. Shoot, swish, swallow. This is Gary. He's a bar back. I'm not a waitress. Unbelievable. So this is Christina. She's a bartender. Cranberry vodka on yours, too. And this is Salvador, the cook. So this guy's wearing a sleeveless shirt in a bar. And look, when he lifts his arm. Oh, gosh. Is it a presence of armpit hair? No. Hey, this guy just wants to party. Come on, Rachel. Shut up, Donald. Rudeness. Stop calling me Rachel. So Don is a bit disrespectful. Hello, how are you? Hey. What's your name? Cat. Cat? I could have swore it was Rachel. I call everybody Rachel. That way I don't have to remember your name. Wow. He doesn't care about their name. He just calls every girl Rachel. That's awesome. That was polite of me. It disgusts me. You want a drink? So look at Don. He's pouring alcohol directly into the mouths and of his customers mind. and himself. 
When you see this bar in the pits, first of all, he's touching people's lips. So if one customer has a cold, they all do. He's giving away all of this booze. Look at this guy. Oh, no wonder why he's in the hole. Anybody? All right. Well, for recon this week, I have Lisa Marie Joyce, and I have Anthony Lamas. Oh, great. I put him in disguise. Hi. Hi. Good, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing? Good, good. How are you? Good, how are you? Yeah. I'll take any draft. Pick one for me. Okay. Something light. Rum and Coke or something? Rum and Coke. Uh, Where are they going? Short. Give them okay. to me. Single. Most of the tacos there? Are these yours? Are these yours? Are these yours? So he could have said yes and gotten yep. it right away. Eat them oh. and shut the f up. Can we get one more What? Shut up for at least five to ten minutes. That's all I ask. Five to ten minutes, shut the f up. Here's me, here's you. Whoever disagree, f you, here's me. Don't, don't show how does he make money here? He doesn't. Mine's a little warm. Is it? So Anthony said the beer is warm. Can you give me your credit card? No, they're on me. On oh, yeah. Now, what does that mean? Is he going to pay for it? John's paying for him. Good game, brother. So these people are probably his friends, and they'll come in here and they'll drink all his booze night after night after night. So they're taking advantage of him. He's really a chump letting them take advantage yeah. of him. Because if he wasn't giving it away, they wouldn't come here. That's right. You're right. What we got going there? They call them little mini beers. OK, so is that beer with heavy whipping cream? Oh, my gosh. This is a drink that probably cost, I'm guessing, $2.10 a drink. Wow. So you start giving these away, it's $20, $200, $2,000. Imagine it adds this. Up. After a month, they've given away hundreds and hundreds of these. You had one before? Are they on the house or something? I will buy it myself. Sure. Just so that you can yeah, taste it. they're free. I'll take them. Oh my God, free? free? Okay. Yeah. Might as well. I believe in you. Go, go, go. Swish. I never knew cream floated on whiskey because I would never want to do it. Never. <clears throat> we'll do the BLT, and then I want to do those tacos that I saw. I'll do the wrap, I think. Look at this place. Look how messy all this looks. I can already smell it, and I haven't even been inside yet. I can't imagine the contamination. It looks like a file cabinet. OK, look at this kitchen. So let's see the fryer. Look at the color of it. You see it's all wrong in color? It's the filth in the oil. All the filth. Look at the side. It's disgusting. Look at the smoke coming up. That's not the oil smoking. That's the dirt in the oil that causes that smoke. Because oil doesn't smoke, you know that. Uh -huh. Look at the color of it. You see it's all wrong in color? It's the filth in the oil. Looks like there's dead bugs in it. It does, but look at how it's sticky and gunky up there. You know that this hasn't been rotated. Oh, those should be white. Oh, no. Oh. So you know what makes that color? Bacteria. Yeah. So that are E. coli colonies and filth on there. OK, here we go, some food. They can't eat this food. Oh, they can't. Let's go in and Let's stop this together. Let's do it. Oh, yes! oh my god. Boosh, 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 boosh. I, I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. Oh, Jenny McCarthy. I wouldn't eat anything if I were you guys. John Tavern's here. Can I have your attention for a minute, please? What do you think? You see all that? Oh, God. Oh, my God. I think it's deep fried taco. Every one of them. Oh. When did you buy this bar? Eight months ago. How much in debt are you from it? Half a million. Half a million frickin' dollars. Yep. How much you lose in a month? Six thousand. Six thousand dollars. How long till you're out of money? A month and a half. You're done in a month and a half. Did you know that? You're done in a month and a half. Did you know that? No. This came out in your watch. I wasn't watching. Exactly. I watched on camera one of the most disgusting kitchens I've ever seen. Is that somewhere else? No, it's yours. Come with me. I want to show it to you. Anthony, come with me. Jenny, I want you to see oh, this. Oh, it's vile. You guys stay here. Come You're on back. You're going to be scared. What's this? Three fried beans. Uh, this is three weeks old. Oh, my god. Touch it. Slimy, isn't it? Yes, yeah. sir. Let's get rid of that. This is your freaking life. You're in debt a half a million dollars. Look at this. These are your French fries. They should be frozen, right? Are they? No. Nope. Oh, my God. They're made to be cooked frozen. When was this replaced? In the chef, this should be replaced every couple of days, the container, correct? Yep. Be stored in a proper container? Always flipped. flipped when? Through. How old do you think here? this is? Don? 
I have no idea. Would you eat that? You gonna serve that to someone? You don't have a freaking clue. I know that you call all your employees by the same name, don't you? <clears throat> they don't stick around long enough to be called by it. Well, why don't they stick around long enough? I'm assuming it's the industry. It's you. Would you want to work here? Look at this. This is the deal. I I don't put that in those containers. I don't. I don't. But they do... work for you. I agree. Don, you're the owner. I'm a chef and the owner of my restaurant. It's my responsibility to teach my team. If something goes wrong, it's my name. It's your problem. Oh my so god. So edible. You got food that's been oh eaten, stored with non-open food. This is immoral. You're gonna get somebody sick. Right now, I have absolutely no respect for you. Stop drinking here. Stop pouring booze down people's throat and act like a business owner, and I'll help you. If you don't, I won't. That's the deal. What do you say, Don? Fair enough. OK, well, clean up your kitchen. You do this my way. Now, give me a yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go wash your hands, Jenny. Let's get the out of here. You got to be here all night long, man. I am going to inspect this place tomorrow. Give me that. Thank you. Stop drinking. Yes, sir. Folks, we just shut this kitchen down for health violations that are actually outrageous. Do not eat here. Come back in two days after we clean it. Then you can eat here. Shut it down. It's disgusting. Do not eat. You already did. I would watch yourself tonight, because you were probably going to have a great relationship with your toilet tonight. Oh, disgusting. I'm pissed off about being humiliated. And... I was we, to we knew this was coming. Throw it on the floor. I mean, I think it's a little excessive. It's probably my last night. If somebody actually gets into Don's head that he really needs to pull his head out of his ass, things are going to change. What the f I just want to punch him between his eyes. But if he doesn't want to change, nobody can make him. How no one has died eating at this place is a miracle unto itself. And you're an expert in Jenny. Thank you. Honored. One, two, three. Ugh. Oh, my. Hi, this is John Taffer. Click here to subscribe to Paramount Network on YouTube for more Bar Rescue.